Welcome back to Large Ship Combat 101. I'm John Brewer. This is the second part of our episode on firing solutions in Space Engineers. Last week, we covered the basic cases of targeting weapon systems. Today, we're going to look at calculating firing solutions between two ships traveling on different vectors. We'll be covering two types of firing solutions, a spherical movement system and a Cartesian movement system. First, though, we need to discuss sights. Sights are versatile tools that we'll need to get a reading on the position and movement of our target. In Space Engineers, a sight is constructed much like a simple turret. The base rotor gives us the azimuth angle, or how many degrees port or starboard the target is. The rotor in the arm gives us the elevation angle, or how many degrees above or below the ship the target is. It is important, though, that we make sure the zero marks for both rotors are pointed towards the bow of the ship. We need to use the sight locally with a control chair, as remote controls and cameras in Space Engineers won't give us the HUD markers that give us range indications. To use the sight, we simply take control and point the crosshairs at the target we're attempting to track. A sighting needs four pieces of information. First, the exact time of the observation. Maintaining a running clock during combat greatly aids in this regard. Second, we need to record the exact range to the target at the moment of observation. Without moving the sight, you need to open the ship's terminal and take the azimuth and elevation readings off of your rotors. These four numbers, the time, the range, the azimuth, and the elevation, define the specific point in space relative to your ship. To determine a target's motion, we need to take two observations, hopefully very close to each other. Once we have two observations, there are two ways we can calculate a shooting solution. The first method is more practical if you have to do the solution by hand and don't have a calculator handy. This is the spherical movement method. We calculate the rate of change of the range, the azimuth, and the elevation in terms of time. We choose a time that we're going to fire. This should be far enough in the future that we can calculate the solution and lay the gun with a few seconds to spare. We then need to calculate the flight time of the projectile. That is simply the range at the time we fire divided by our projectile speed minus the rate at which the target is pulling away from us. We add the flight time to the fire time, and we have the time we expect the shot to impact the target. Finally, we multiply the change in azimuth and elevation per second by the time between the second observation and the expected impact time, add those to the baseline values in the second observation, and we get the azimuth and elevation that we need to fire at. We have from now until the moment of firing to lay the guns themselves. I find it easiest to set the maximums and minimums in the terminal to bracket my target, and then rotate the turret manually. Finally, when the clock reaches our calculated moment to fire, we discharge the weapon. If all our math was right and the physics engine interference wasn't too bad, we should hit our target at the time and point of impact we calculated. There are, however, two sources of error that will hurt us here. The first error is mathematical, because we're predicting the motion of an object on a linear path by extrapolating spherical coordinates. This error will be greater the farther the object gets from us in space and time, so our observations have a shelf life of less than a minute or so. The second error is introduced by the maximum speed limitations we covered last week. To mitigate the maximum speed issues, you can use weapons that always accelerate to a fixed velocity relative to your ship, and always fire opposite the direction of your motion. Otherwise, much more complicated math will be needed to find your actual projectile speed relative to your target. The second method for calculating a shooting solution is considerably more complicated mathematically, but corrects for the first of these errors. We take the same two observations we made earlier, but before we extrapolate our target's motion, we convert the spherical coordinates into regular XYZ Cartesian coordinates. By converting them into the same coordinate system Space Engineers uses, we get an actual velocity vector for the target ship rather than just an apparent motion. When you actually calculate your firing angle using this method, it is usually easier to establish your desired time of impact and calculate back from there. First, we calculate the change in the x, y, and z coordinates over time. Multiply those change rates by the time between the second observation and the intended time of impact, and add the second observation to get the position of the target at the time we expect to hit it. Now we convert the position of impact back into spherical coordinates. The spherical coordinates tell us the azimuth and elevation we need to aim the turrets. We divide the range by the speed of our projectile to get the flight time. Finally, we subtract the flight time from the impact time to get the fire time. We lay the gun, and when we reach the firing time, we fire the weapon. 
This method is much more likely to result in a hit than the apparent motion method, especially at range. There are still problems with the Cartesian method, though. Since our sights are limited to one degree of accuracy, the error envelope for a shot can be quite large, especially if the two observations are taken in rapid succession. The speed limit problems in space engineers that plague the other methods of firing are also a problem here, although it's easier to correct for them with this method. It is important to remember with both of these methods that they require you to maintain a constant velocity. If you change your heading or speed, you'll invalidate your old observations. Also, if the target begins to maneuver, it will also invalidate all observations you took up to that point, and shots in flight will likely miss. We can solve that problem with something called zone firing, but that's a video for another day. Until next time, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.